<laughs> All right. So Michael's question is uh, breathing patterns on the press. Uh, it looks like uh, talked about. Let's see. Ex- when do you want to exhale at the top or like versus the bottom when you're back in like the racked position? Yeah. What's your approach to that, Grant? He wants to know when 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 What's when, when's the ideal? Yeah. So a little bit of a tough question. So in starting strength, we teach something called the press 2.0 where you throw your hips at the for, uh, at the start. So like your pelvis goes forward, your knees don't bend. It's not a push press. You just throw your hips forward. So you, we would breathe in, you would brace, you'd throw your hips forward. As you did that, the bar would come down a little bit and then it would go up and then you'd come back down and you'd get a new breath. So in that style of lift, you could technically breathe out at the top, <laughs> exhale, come down, new breath, throw the hips again. Most people, I just tell them, if you're pressing like that, press 2.0, starting strength style, breathe at the bottom. Like throw the hips, press the bar up, come down, exhale, new breath, go into the next rep. The other thing is like something we would call, um, let's just call a strict press or a lot of the internet will call a military press or press 1.0, where same deal, holding the bar in front of you, in front of your shoulders, and you're just pressing it up overhead. You'd breathe at the bottom, you just press the bar up and you'd come down. I'd still say breathe out once you bring the bar down, take a new breath, don't hang out, and go into the next rep. The where it gets tricky is there's another technique where you so in the press 2.0, we're getting a stretch reflex out of the hips. You're throwing the hips out of the psoas, the muscles are hitting their end of their extensibility, making your pelvis come back. You're getting a little bounce out of the bar and you're throwing it up. The reason we like that versus a push press is because it's reproducible. The problem with the push press, there's no problem with it. It's a fine movement, but you can just bend your knees more next time when you add weight and therefore incorporate more quadriceps. So if I'm push pressing, I'm bending my knees to get my quad to get the bar up and then I'm locking it out. And so there's no way to say, I will only bend my knees this much each time. So as the weight goes up in the bar, you just start using more quads. And the argument that I would make as an SSC is that you work your quads when you squat and you deadlift. You're not trying to work your quads when you press. I mean, obviously they're being utilized because it's a long kinetic chain throughout your whole body, but the goal is not, hey, I'm trying to work my quads right now. So that's why we do the press 2.0 because you can get a stretch reflex out of the psoas and it's reproducible every time and therefore you can add weight and it's a trainable thing. The other one is a strict press, but the problem with the strict press is it's going to be limiting because it's not quite as much muscle mass. The other way you can get a stretch reflex is something we call a press 1.0 is where on rep one, you press the bar up and lock it out and then you exhale at the top, <sighs> reset your breath. And then as you bring the bar down, you actually get the stretch reflex out of the tricep. So as you come down, the tricep extends and you come down to the bottom and go right back up. So in that style of press, you would breathe out at the top after rep one. If it's heavy, you obviously need to be tight for rep one. So you'd breathe in, press it out and then go down and up. So, um, so to answer his my- question, it, it's yes. Yeah. Depending on what you're doing. Don't forget to breathe. Yeah, yeah don't forget to breathe. It all, uh, so it all depends on what, what kind of press you're doing. It depends doing. on what type of press you're doing. But you want to definitely hold your breath through the concentric, a.k.a. the, the pushing portion of the lift. Uh, if you are doing the one, if you are trying to get a stretch reflex out of the bottom, you would want to breathe out of the top. Yeah, mm-hmm. long, long-winded answer, but maybe that's a YouTube video. That should be a YouTube yeah, video. Yeah, a YouTube video. Yeah, yeah, and then also you could talk about like why someone would switch to the 1.0 or not. Not an SAC, not an SEC, but I know I think I heard Rip talk about one time like if someone you has shoulder J-Tac. issues, I, that is true. Yeah. Get him. Yeah. Yes, SSC, but I am a JSC. <laughs> <I love it. laughs> uh, but he said something about like uh, I heard some video of him talking about like someone had shoulder issues. It was bothering them. Sometimes starting from the top basically can help. Yep. Yeah. Some people solve that. It can help for people with shoulder issues. I generally use that for people that you're trying to th- teach them how to throw their hips. And they're what we call like a motor moron. Like they just, they, they just push press every time they keep bending their knees and it's like, well, this isn't productive. And so we just say, Hey, let's do this other way. 
And, uh, and I mean, I think there's the press 2.0 is great. Definitely incorporates more muscle mass, but there's also way move more room for error. When you throw your hips far, you can easily get the bar out of its bar path. So, I mean, when I teach people how to press, if you come in and say, Grant, you're an SSC, teach me how to press. I'm going to teach you a strict press because I want you to figure out how important the bar path is and how to lock it out properly overhead. And then when your press starts to fail, I'm going to try to teach you the press 2.0 and not that age has anything to do with it, but if you're a 60 year old dude, that's kind of uncoordinated, I'm just like, Hey man, press the first one up, breathe out at the top and then, you know, bounce out of the bottom. Um, so yeah, there's, there's different times for each one. Uh, I don't like to teach new lifters to press 2.0 though. I mean, I can, I'm capable, but like, I don't, unless they really want to do it. I'm like, bro, you're pressing 55 pounds. Like, let's just learn. Let's learn how to get the bottom position right and the top position right and keep it close to your face. Like, we don't need to be throwing hips around. Good question. The hips don't Amen. lie. Amen. Amen.